a good song, but I got to stop because we got stuff to do. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you do well. Ken is with us, and uh, Enrico, Joe, Jose, Rod, Vinky, Stacy. I don't know if I see anybody else. It's just not short on screen. So happy afternoon. Hope you have a great, great day. I had a wonderful day. Tomorrow is my and Bess' twenty uh, second anniversary. Unbelievable. October the 23rd in the year of our Lord, 1999, we got married and have made it this far. Although during our six-year courtship, she dumped me six times, treated me like a yard dog. And they said we would not last. But here we are to this day. Um, okay. So with that being said, I, I, I'm sorry, y'all. I've got to apologize. I got y'all into the TQQs at a bad time. Because look, the Q, TQ, the NQ is down point one, almost 1%. Oh, my gosh. Our timing was horrible, y'all. Our timing was just horrible. Now we're down a whole 1%, which means on TQQQ, we should be down 3%. Oh, no. Oh, God, it's even worse. Well, it's not even. Okay, I, I saw the four there. So we're almost down 3%, not quite. Remember, TQQQ is supposed to be three times of what the NASDAQ is or the Qs are. So we're almost down 3%. Oh, behave. What a horrible day. My apologies to everybody for getting you into the TQs at this time. So let's see how we're doing for today. Okay, we're down $30. Y'all, it's working. It's working. Nothing I ever do works. This is working. So with my TQQQ, where they at? I am down $346 on the TQs, but my account is up $18. My account's up $17. It's working. This is what we wanted, right? We wanted to neutralize the effect of a big move down in the TQQQs. Because remember, the experts are telling you and me, here's what they're saying. You cannot hold TQQ. You can't hold it as a long-term investment. So I basically said, here's what I told the experts. Hold my beverage. Of course, I don't drink beer. It's a nasty beverage. But if I did, hold my beer. All right. That's what we told them. Hey, we're going to do our own thing there, pal. Don't tell me I can't hold it. Thank you, Rod, for the anniversary wishes. All right, now I'm going to tell you what I did yesterday because I did make a little tweak yesterday. And here's what I did. Let's look at the market first. Right? So we'll go here. What do we see? Oh, uh, the AD line. Where's it at? It disappeared. Oh, there it is. The AD line is at 185. Yeah, yeah that's a respectable positive, right? And yet the markets are down 0.14%. Uh, the Qs are down, as we said, almost... One uh, percent. Um, the opening range on the E minis this morning looks bigger, doesn't it? Thirty-three to forty-seven. So what's that? Fourteen points. Yeah, fourteen points. The opening cash was here, and we are right at the opening right here. So it's kind of a do-nothing kind of day, right? Not a lot of movement. Overnight high was here, just at the top of the opening range. Uh, let's see what else little lines we got down here. We got a pivot point here. We got the overnight low here. What do we got down to catch us down here? Nothing but a pivot point. Well, we got upstairs to catch us or to keep us. We got overnight high, which will be resistance and nothing. But we're free to do whatever we want to on this type of day. All right, so here's the NQ, right? Down 1% below VWAP. It's uh, below the overnight low even. And uh, kind of cool. So we're looking at volume, doing what volume does. I normally look at volume of the EB. Oh, I took my mama out for lunch today. I had a good time. Oh, I had some peach cobbler today. Oh, was it good? If I just had a scoop of vanilla bean ice cream going to place on top of it, it would have been super good. So let's look at our volume profile, which is what we always do. Volume profile, well, I'll be darned. What is volume profile doing? Volume profile is showing that there is a struggle and a little bit, you see this, the 50% line that we drew back on October the 1st is coming into play on October the 22nd. How's that possible? Really, I have no idea. I don't know why it works, how it works, it just works. 
So we're seeing a little bit of consolidation along that 50% line. Actually, the 50% line on the E-minis is serving as support. Everyone sees it clearly, right? And surprise, surprise, as Rod brought up earlier in our chat, that uh, look at there, we're huddling around the point of control on our volume profile. No surprise there. So I have no surprise that we're having some consolidation along this point in time on the e minis right? So what is our assumption? If I were to just look at this chart, we're fairly priced. We call this the fair value zone. Anytime you see this little checkered line, that's a zone of fair value. So the fair value zone is in this butt area. I always draw the butt. There's a butt, and this is fair value. So it's fairly priced. This is a period, this is where price becomes oversold. And the section above this is where price is overbought. So while all of the experts are telling you that we're we're overbought, we're we're overbought, we're due for that, you just simply tell them, you know, we're not listening to your CNBC garbage, right? We don't care what CNBC says. We don't care what y'all say. We say we're not over this or under this. We are fairly priced. So when you get interviewed on CNBC one day, might happen, right? Uh, you tell them, all, everybody's saying we're, we're overbought due for correction. You simply tell them, well, actually, you're incorrect. So we're fairly priced. And then you've got charts to show them, to show them, and they'll be considering you an idiot, and they'll probably never have you back on CNBC again. But who wants to be on CNBC? All right. All right. The other thing that we look at is our SKU driver. So my assumption right now is that price will probably teeter on this area, probably hit up between there, and it could go between there. So here's kind of my range, right, for the next five days, 10 days. Now it kind of looks like this. So I'm pretty neutral. We're fairly priced. So to help me get a little bit of a better idea, we need to pull up our old friend, the SKU driver. So we'll pull that SKU driver up. And we'll say, hey, Mr. Skew, what are you saying today? What are you saying? So we go here and we say, what's our skew today? So our skew is, let's see, where my it's 1121. Is this thing working? Are you on? Are you doing it, baby? Are you sometimes my little skew driver has a bug in it, doesn't want to operate. Hold on a second. Let's see. Where my days are, why it's not working. I would think it, this would probably clear up if I simply restart my computer and I just haven't done it. Let me go here. Since my screwdriver seems to be broken, let me see where. Restart Excel. Yeah, that's what I need to do. Just restart the whole thing. Let's see where my SPX stuff is, so 30 days out. So 30 days, do I have a 30 days? I got a 31 and a 28. So I got a 31 and 28 days. So I'll go back to my little Maduki here. 28 and 31, 28 and 31. Let's go to 31. Yeah, I can't try. I need to restart. Let me close this. Don't save. You know, open it back up. I'll close this and I won't save. And I'll close my other one up. And I won't say, and I hope everybody got the links for the things, right? Do not use the back test as your official spreadsheet. Do not. It does not have all the little formulas and the cool little stuff that the other one does because I disabled some of that to be able to do my thing. So let's go and open this again. Let's go to SKU driver. Come on, baby, work. SKU work. Here we go. There we go. Looks like it's going to work. So here we go. So we're looking at the one that's 5.2, and we're going to see uh, the price of 5.2. What's it trading at? So I'm just watching this. I'm watching the movement. Watching the movement, watching the movement, nothing's moving. It's basically just giving me the, about the 44 number, 4.9, change to 5.2. Okay, I'll go with the 43, 44. Let's see what this one looks like. 43, 44, 5.1, 38. I normally go whichever one is closest to 30. So I'd really rather, you know, if you're going using this one, you're going to be at about 38. But right here, if I use this one, I'm about at 44, I think. I don't know, 43, 44. All right, that's close enough for me. So let's go over here. Let's say that today is the year of our Lord, 10, 22, 21. 
And so we're about at a 43, 44. And then I've got, I shared this with y'all too. So it automatically should put the 25 and the 35 in there for you, see? So to keep this thing going. So you will know where the average is. This is where the average should be. And we're a little outside the average, which tells me that if I had to make a bet, if I had a bullet to my head, I'm going to say that I am bullish on the market because I expect a reversion to the mean. There's only two things that revert to the mean that you and I work with, and that is VIX and the SKU. VIX and SKU are only two things, only two assets, we'll call this asset, only two instruments that will revert back to the mean. This is one of them. So I expect this 43 to eventually become 35 and inside this 25 line. So this is bullish, slightly bullish. Everybody with me on the SKU. You know what the SKU does, slightly bullish. All right, so save that. We got that recorded, so we can keep up with it. So, you know, now you go, we've got a very nice little thing going into next week. We are slightly bullish to neutral going into next week. Right, going into money because we look at this every day. So that's kind of where we're at. We're fairly priced. We're neutral to slightly bullish on the market based on skew and what we're seeing on our volume profile and, and big green monster. So that's just where we are. So that's our assumptions and our assumptions mean nothing. I think what we've done now is we've built a great little strategy that allows us not to have to do a lot. But I did do a lot yesterday after I left y'all. So let me just tell you what I did yesterday. And it probably would help if I went to Portfolio Visualizer to show you why, why I did what I did. So as you realize, uh, the current uh, portfolio that I have is about 72% TQQQ and the rest is in cash. 72% TQQ and 28% in cash. So I changed that up a little bit yesterday. And I'll tell you what I did. So rather than, uh, well, we could do a couple of different portfolios here. And I kind of like started this at 50,000 rather than uh, there. Rebalance annually. Do we want to do year to date? Where's my year to date? Coming? Year to date, yes. We want to see what it's doing through October. All right. So let's say that we have a variety of different things we can do. So say we do TQQQ and we have cash that you can put cash on, right? Cash. And then I told you possibility of a bond fund. This is a triple, uh, three times the 20 year treasury bill, right? So let's do a couple of different portfolios and see how they, they, they work, right? So let's say that we were to go, uh, hmm, let's see how I wanted to do this. Give me a second to think. It's Friday and I've got sugar overload with all my peach cobbler. So let's say we wanted to do the 80-20 kind of that I was doing, right? 80-20 cash. There's one portfolio. But how would that work going from 2010 when the, 2000, the TQQQs came into existence? Cash was in existence before then, right? So if we did TQQQQ, 80-20, and zero on this. All right, now what about if you did TQQQ, 80% here, we did zero cash, and instead of being in cash, we did a portfolio that had 20% in TML, right? So you're in an equity and you're also in a bond fund. So that could be a cool little comparison. Then what if you did this? What if you did a portfolio that was roughly 80% TQQQ, 10% cash, and 10% uh, TML? So let's look at those three portfolios and let's analyze them and see what those look like. All right, so here we go. We've got three different portfolios. Let's see how they perform. So first, and look, they're kind of cool, right? Because they're all kind of right there together. Which one won? Let's see, it'd be the red one. So which one would that be? That would be portfolio number two was the winner as far as overall returns. Well, what was portfolio number two? Portfolio number two involved us going 80% into the TQs and 20% into the TML. Now, this is kind of cool, Rod. So you've got one that is a 401k where you can't do a lot of options in, right? So you may want to find, you know, a similar bond fund to put your 20% in rather than doing cash because what it shows us is if you did the 80% 
uh, TQQs and cash, you averaged 41.69% per year and had a 41% drawdown. Your worst year was blah, blah, blah. But if you took that second portfolio and rather than having money that was not working in cash, you had it going into TMF, the bond fund, then you did a little bit better, didn't you? So you did 45.62%. Keep in mind, you did have a drawdown of 42%. When did that happen? Uh, looks like September to December 18th, but you recovered by October the 2019. And then you might want to look at which one of these had the highest Sharp ratio, the higher the sharp ratio, the better, supposedly. The higher the shortino, the better, supposedly. And sure enough, portfolio two has the highest sharp ratio and the highest shortino ratio. Now, here's why I would not, in a portfolio where I'm going to trade options, I would not put 100% of my money into TQs and the um, TMLs. And the reason is it'll take up all your buying power and you won't be able to trade options. So if you have an account where you need to trade options, then I wouldn't do that. I'd leave a little cash on the side. Now, you may be saying, Rod, yeah, but if I'm 100% between TMF and the TQs, what about if I need cash and the Lachello algorithm tells me to buy the TQs, right? I get a thing that says I need to buy TQs because it goes down a lot. Well, then what you would do is you would, you know, you'd have to sell allegedly from the TMF to get cash to buy the whatever. So I would probably go, I'd leave 5% cash in that thing, just if you don't want to have to liquidate any of TMF at any time. But you can clearly see um, that the, the portfolio, if you've got to make a decision between cash and putting little bonds in there, you are much better off, right? Going with, let's see, where's the amounts that we have? Where's our amounts? amounts? Oh, here we go. Final balance. So your fifty thousand dollars from two thousand ten with the first portfolio, you bet two point one million, right? Portfolio two, you bet two point eight, which actually maximized, right? That's what we were talking about, right? And portfolio three, you know, did decent as well, uh, two point four million. So here's what I kind of decided yesterday. I decided, yep, I probably do need since it's better performing than cash. Over the long run, let's go ahead, bite the bullet. As much as I don't like, uh, as much as I don't, I'm not a fan of having bonds in there, I guess it's better than having cash. So now, here's what I've got in that portfolio as of yesterday. And I bought, I don't know, 200 something shares of TMF, the three time leverage bull 20 year treasure. So let's look at it when this thing eventually opens. All right, so any question on that? Yeah, so Rod, you like that, right? So now it's basically saying you can get better performance if you switch a little bit into a bond fund rather than just keeping the 25% the cash there. So might as well have some of that use. So I would probably do 20% and leave 5% for cash in case you have to buy some UPRO because you're definitely going to have to buy UPRO. So here's what the account looks like now. So here you can see that uh, TQs are 34000 Right, my 243 shares. You can see that I've got cash of, and I've got to get the percentage in here uh, some way. I'll figure that out at some point. And you've got TMF uh, at 5,400, whatever. So I'm 86% invested. And then I went over here, and, you know, like once a year when you want to, you know, so say you want this and this to make up 90% of your portfolio, then all you got to do here is it'll tell you to buy 12 there, buy 10 there, and then that'll give you 90% cash. And the rest of your 90% will be in your TQQ and your TMF. Isn't that cool? All right. So I don't think there should be any questions on that. If there are, I'm glad to answer them. But look, look, here's here's a great thing too that happened, right? So let's look at the account. So hey, I mean, Bobby. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. One real quick question on that: When you like, you have the TQQs, and then you have the um, the other. How do you, do you do? You just manually decide the percentage you want of TQQ versus the TMF. Yes. Yeah. For and, the spreadsheet and, purposes. Yeah, for spreadsheet purposes, when you start out, and so you know, you're at seventy five 
TQQ 25 cash. So now I would say, what is your portfolio value today? And then I would probably put 20% of the portfolio into the TMF or TLT. If you don't want to do the three X, but you know, into whatever bond fund that you want to put it in, because it's going to be over time, a greater performer than just holding cash. And then, then leave maybe 5%, you know, for cash. So when you get the trigger to buy more TQQQ, you'll be, you know, ready to go with 5% cash on hand. And probably what's going to happen is you're going to be converting TQQ to cash over the intermediate. So your cash balance is going to go up. So I'm kind of thinking, here's, here's my thought process. If I were to start it again today, right, I would probably say, you know, I'm going to do 80% TQQQ. I'm probably going to do, you know, 10% TMF and then keep 10% cash and then just let it run. And, and what we've tried to develop is something for y'all that are working the full-time job, you're doing the nine to five, you're doing the grind. And then, you know, you may be able to look at this during your lunch hour or doing the bathroom break. So you don't have to run this all the time. So you should be able to run your whole little sweet butts I don't know about that name. Uh, on a you know weekly basis or a monthly basis or every two weeks or however often you can you know go to your spreadsheet and say, am I getting a signal today? So I look today and am I getting a signal? No, I'm not getting a signal. No take action. There's nothing for me to do. And then just sit and forget and let these little things play out. Now the problem is, you know, you're sitting there, crap, man, Bobby, I'm down three percent on my TQQs. You Fat glass bass, glass wearing, you know, some bitch, whatever you want to call me. So we're down big today in the TQQ. You just got me in this at the wrong time, right? Because we're down two and a half percent. But then you go over here and you go, well, with all this option crap that we got running against us, we're up $42. Ta da! Think about how big that is. A 3% move does not kill us at all in the TQs. I mean, it says we're down $285 there. Woohoo, right? Isn't that great? Now, will it always work this way? I don't know. Again, this is an experiment. I'm experimenting. You're welcome to go along for the ride. Don't blame me when it blows up, but I think we got a good plan. Because what we've got is we've got, what's our assumption? We're neutral to slightly bullish. We have positive theta. And oh my gosh, do we have that oh so powerful positive theta that really comes into uh, help when we have a crash. So how's our individual positions doing? Well, I'm glad you asked. So let's look and see what all we got in the old factory here. So we got black swan hedges, right? Black swan hedges up a little bit today. We got calendar trades. Let's see if anything we need to do with our calendar trade. We are down $72. That's okay. It's giving me negative deltas, positive theta still, positive vega. It's still worthy of keeping. Our black swan hedges are just there to cover us in the event of a, you know, calamity, a catastrophe, a crash. And then our one, one, one trade, y'all. I can't say enough about them. Look, they, they're just so versatile. Just, uh, you know, I got 28 days on those. Just kind of go through everything else. One, 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 18, up $187. $187. This calendar is down just a bit. No big deal. Calendar, my SPX is down big. Oh, I'm up $115 today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I still like it, right? It's giving me negative delta, which is kind of a hedge. It's giving me positive theta and positive beta. No need to do anything there. One, 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 19. How's that do? I'm up $888. How many days I got left on that? 39 days. Beautiful. One, 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 16. Up $152. These are just great little trades. Calendar five. It's down 43, but we're up 13.50 today. That's an after harvest one. You know, I'm just gonna let it expire. One 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 twentieth, down fifteen dollars. That's the one we put on yesterday, wasn't it? Or day before yesterday. Yesterday, I think. So we're down 15 bucks on the one we put on yesterday. Uh, our covered calls. Oh, we gotta make a decision, don't we? We've got covered calls that are up 70%. They expire today. Look at there, I'm up $597 today. 
I'm up 168 today. Oh, that's fun to watch. We'll go watch that in a second, right? So we've got two calls that we sell against our TQQ. I forgot all about that. 11118. Uh, we're up 150 on that one. 39 days to go. Uh, Black Swan Hedge. We've got that little cookie in there. We're down 95 on that, but we know why it's there. Everything has a purpose now. Everything has a purpose in being here. We're up $158 on that one. And I've just been letting them go. And I changed this to the TQQ Empire. So we started the Empire last Friday. So we are up $1,600 on these open shares, even though y'all look at this, we're down $896. It's unbelievable. All right, one, 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 eleven. I got a lot of stuff to just check. And that's all I'm doing, just checking. Anything, they've got seven days on them. Any need to do something there, I don't see it. Uh, one, 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 twelfth. Great little trade, up 168. I mean, they're just, these one, one, one trades are just, you know, settle them and forget them, really, so far. Up $156 on that one. I mean, it's been the best trade I have. Look at that. After harvest, don't need to look at those. Black Swan Hedge complete. It is what it is. Up $80 on that one. The Frankenstein, you know, I need to sell three more on a good down day. The VIX Hedge, you know, it's normally down every day we come in. We're up a little bit today. Okay. So it looks like we're up $16 today. So see, even though, though my, my Q Empire, is on a down 800 something dollars or whatever it was you know we're up on the day and that could or we're down 13 dollars on the day so really really we've got everything cash now so now we need to decide is there anything that we actually need to do today well let's just look let's go back to the chart and see if it's an up day or a down day hard to say isn't it is it a down day bob is it an up day i mean it's a neutral day isn't it so what trade is it that i need to do well on down days, I do one, one, one trades. I'm not sure that I can call this a down day, even though it is down, technically. Um, let's see what the VIX is doing. The VIX will control a lot of what we do today. Let's see what this VIX is doing. Again, I've told you many times we don't look at it enough, but we should. Let me see. Here we go. So let's the VIX is up a little bit today. So let's look at that chart. Dick's chart, yeah, well, you know, we're still down there at the bottom, though. So, you know, if you needed, here's what I would say is if you need, if you have a lot of negative Vega, then, yeah, you could do a calendar today to get your Vega up some, right? But otherwise, I'm not sure that there's anything I need to do. I've got great, 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 great Theta. I've got great Vega. My Delta's right where I need it. You really don't have to do anything, which is cool. That's what I like. It's kind of hands off, you know, set it and forget it. One thing I do need to look at, though, is our TQQ calls. Let's see if these are going to get. Now, the cool thing is also, I keep saying the cool thing. Where are these puppies? Where are my calls? I got 200 something shares of this stock. So I sold two of these babies. Let's see how they look. So looky here. I got them at the 142 strike, and we're at 140, 141. That's close, isn't it? That's too close for comfort. So what do you want to do? Well, if here's here's the neat thing. We got options, y'all, so to speak. If I am very bearish, I would probably let these things expire. And if it closes above my short strike, then I'll get called away, right? My 200 shares get called away. But am I bearish? No. Remember, my assumption right now is I am neutral to slightly bullish. So I don't necessarily want my shares to be called away. So what I would probably do, here's what I probably do. Now, easily, you could, you know, wait to the end of the day. I don't want to watch them, though. I don't want to watch these options. Uh, you know, is it perfectly fine to let them expire worthless? I could do that, right? They still got value in them now, right? You see, if I buy them back now, it's going to cost me 65 cents. I could easily hope that decays to zero. But we don't, we're not on a program here of doing hopium. So I could create a rolling order. Let's check this out. 
I could roll these things out a week and collect another $270. Is that not sweet? And I need to start putting this on a spreadsheet for I keep up with how much money I make on these because it's, it's, it's basically reducing my cost basis on these options. Well, what if I wanted to put those in a little safer place, right? Then I could go, what if we rolled it out to the 143 a week? I don't like those 0.5 strikes. Man, I'd still get me $213. I mean, is that like a no-brainer almost? Or heck, say you want to roll them out a little further, you know, because you don't want to get called next week either. You know, roll them to the 144. So you're rolling them out and up, and you're still going to put $200. I kind of like that. Roll them out and up and still collecting the credit. I mean, apologies, but oh, I'm getting more than that because I'm getting two of them. Look at that. I forgot I got two contracts. I'm getting $333 credit to roll them out to a safer position for a whole week. Uh, Cha-ching, right? Uh, sign me up. I'm all for making $330 in, in one week. I'm all about that. Let's reduce my credit a little bit. $329. We'll work it down a little bit. Just to be a credit. There we go. Cha ching. Little Bobby's going to make $300 over the next week if price is under $144. Bobby, what if it goes past that strike? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to roll it out again. Unless I all of a sudden become a little bit bearish on the TQs. And then what could I do? I could let them call them away. Go, baby, go. And still keep my credit of the premium that I sold last week or the beginning of this week on these covered calls and that I just sold now. So I just took in another $329. Touching. And even so, if those get called away from me, I still got how many shares? That call away 200 shares. I'm still left with part of my empire. If I'm growing my empire, where's my empire? Empire, empire. Boom, 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 boom. I still got 43 shares left if that gets called away from me. It's a no brainer, isn't it? Are y'all with me? Unallocated. What have I got unallocated? I got ES. Nope, those are gone. So I got my TQQ covered calls. There they go. So now we'll go, let's move these to my covered call group. Move to group, covered call. Where is it at? Covered credit. My covered calls group. All right. And then, what am I going to call TML? I mean, I, I could put that in AIM. We got another, we got to call it another name. I got an idea. What would we just call it TML? Huh? Move to group. We'll just call it, or we could call it the bonds, the bonds. Let's call it the bonds, the bonds. So now I got everything organized. So that's zero, zero. Those are expiring. Yep, yep, yep. So, and check it out. <laughs> Those are up 538 today, whereas my shares are down 800 today. Is that just great? How come we hadn't thought about this sooner, y'all? So I put the bonds on yesterday. Thank God I did, right? I've been $128 out of them in one day. Cha-ching. All right, that's it. I got nothing else to show. Which is kind of cool, right? Because it's been taking us a whole hour to go through everything. But now we're like, hey, we got this thing going. We got this thing done. All right, he's got questions. I'm pretty excited about this. I like kind of the hands-off approach. We got an 80 10 10 or an 80 20 set up. Let it run. Do your little option trades around. Do y'all want to do a 1 1 1 trade? We can. Why would you do it? Well, if I did a 1 1 1 trade, it'd probably give me, you know, neutral to slightly bullish deltas. Do I want slightly bullish deltas? Maybe so. It'll give me positive theta and it'll give me negative vega. I can afford all that, right? I mean, that's another thing you say. I, yeah, I can do that. Let's see what our groups are now that we roll. Let's take our groups off. So now we're 51. 
47 and 302. I can sleep like a baby over the weekend. Isn't that cool? It's working on chat. Hands off. I don't believe it. I know Batman, right? Hands off. Who cares? Because remember, in this portfolio that I'm running now, you've got to think, what is my goal? My goal is to create an empire. My goal is to, you know, I'm a TQQ guy. The world tells me I can't hold it long, and I'm going to try it against the wind. Was that Bob Seger did against the wind? Who's against the wind? Mine is to reset to let ER run. To let her run, not ER. Yeah, mine is reset to let her run. Let her go, baby. Let your son go, right? And then hopefully in 10 years, we'll take a this $50,000 portfolio. Maybe we'll be up to the you know $1 million in 10 years. Just run it. Do a little options on the side. You don't even have to do the options on the side. If y'all don't want to run all the options things, just say, hey, I savor the day when TQs go down. Because when it goes down, I'm buying more shares. How do you know how many shares to buy? You got a spreadsheet that I shared yesterday. Tells you exactly how much to buy, right? Isn't that cool? What is it telling me today? Nothing. Absolutely freaking nothing. And we're down 3%. Now, let's play for a little bit. Say this goes down to 130. Let's just play. Right? It's always fun to play on this. Still not buying anything. Let's say this thing goes down to 120. Buy five shares, Bob. Isn't that cool? What if you go down to 100? Need to buy 60 shares. Oh, behave. What if we go down to 50? So you don't panic, right? You go, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. And you buy 387 shares. But Bobby, what if it almost wipes out and goes down $25? Friend, you'll be buying 1,041 shares. Cha-ching. So now a market crash doesn't even bother you because you're like, I'm building an empire. Go down, baby. Go down to 25, you 130 something. Let's buy you. Now, you know, you don't have to have a big stomach. You can't be looking every day and going, you know, 10 on your fingernails and, you know, going to the bathroom, throwing up every day, going, I can't believe my money's down this. You don't care. We're doing this long term, pumpkin. Okay. And if TQQQ does what it normally does and keeps going up, guess what you're going to do? You're going to be puking shares. So what is it now? Let's say, so now let's say it goes up to 170. Okay, Buttercup, you better be selling 26 shares. What if it goes up to 200, Bob? You better be selling 55 shares. Well, what if it goes up to 300, Bob? You best be selling 110 shares. Isn't that fun? Well, if it goes up to 400, Bob, you better be selling 137 shares. God, is this not great? I hope y'all are excited as I am, because I'm excited. You know, it's kind of cool when you go on vacation, you come up with something, and you think, man, this is, it's not perfect. It's not Nirvana. It's not, you know, it's not the Holy Grail, but it's a well thought, thought out program. It really is. Let me get that back to where it's out on there for pulling the price again. And do it. There it goes. Right? So let the algo do what the algo needs to do. The algo will tell you exactly what you want to do. All you got to do is find your opening risk. So you're less risk averse than me, right? So it happens we will host a, you don't, right? If it happens, we will host a big get together party. Yeah, can you imagine exactly what you do? And this thing starts going up like it does normally, and we're going to start parking out cash, right? This thing starts going up and we're going to convert shares to cash. It'll also help in this thing too, right? So if TMF were to go to 12, it's going to tell you to buy 213 shares. But it's already built into it. What if we go to 400? Well, you better be selling 176 of your 210 shares. Isn't that cool? That is just so cool, y'all. So let it run. You got to have a little bit of faith. I would encourage you to get to know these numbers. So you don't want some fat slob from Bowden, Georgia, who rolls out of bed at 10 o'clock every day telling you how to run your portfolio. 
that's the worst thing, right? Don't trust me. I want you to go and look at these hidden fields and kind of figure out what these things mean. You know, what's, what's old boy got programmed in here? You know, who the hell is he to tell me how to run my portfolio? And yeah. So you need to read that book, La Cello, and figure out what is safe. What is safe? Safe is 10% of your stock value. So everybody looks like I've programmed that correctly. Portfolio control is the amount of initial stock that you bought. And if you make additional investments, let's say every month you put more into it, then you need to, on your AIM activity, if it's new money coming in or you're rebalancing at the, new, at the end of the year or it's a new underline, you need to put yes here. Now, if it just throws off a signal to buy or sell and you go in here and do it, that's a no. That's not new capital. That's not new balance and it's not underlying. And the reason you tell it no is if it's yes, then your portfolio control is changed and adjusted. Okay. And this is an important thing. So you got to know whether to tell this thing yes or no. And I want to make sure everybody is you know, understands what that means. So if there's any questions about that, let me know. So then the algorithm will tell you to buy or sell. Well, how does it know? Well, it depends on whether this is greater than this or this is greater than this. So right now your stock value is better, is bigger than what we initially bought. We bought 32,000 in stock. Right now my stock value is here. So if my stock value is bigger than my uh, initial investment, then it's going to give me a sale signal. Okay. Well, how much should we sell? Well, the difference between stock value and portfolio value. Well, what's that difference? Seventeen fifty-seven. Okay. So it's basically telling me I should sell seventeen hundred dollars worth of stock. But wait, on the dollar amount here, this thing is blank, and on shares to trade is blank. Why? Because Lacello was genius enough to develop a governor himself and the governor says i'm not going to take any action unless this action amount is greater than the safe amount your action is 1784 so it will not tell us to take an action to buy or sell unless this is greater than that k's got to be greater than h and if K is greater than H, something else has to happen too. Whatever that dollar amount is must be divisible. Now, this is where I put it in. Lucello didn't tell me this. But I say that K2 minus H2 also has to be divisible by the current stock price, which is C2. So C2 is the stock price. So in other words, if you are above, let's say your action figure is 3549 so that's $100 above your safe. Dollar amount's going to say zero. Why? Because you can't buy $100 worth of stock. Because the current share price is $141.95. So not only must the action trigger be above the safe trigger, but it must be at least equal or greater than the current price of the stock in order to tell you to buy one share. Isn't that genius? Can you imagine if Lacello had taken his three by five system and wrote the algorithm into a wonderful little spreadsheet like this? I'm, I'm going through this boring behind the scenes stuff. I want you to see how it was developed. Now this safe and portfolio control and all this action stuff that I did here is probably Greek to most of you. And that's fine. If you don't want to understand it, don't understand it. But I just went through it because I want you to know what it is. And if you haven't read Lacello's book, How to Make a Million Dollars in the Stock Market Automatically. I really encourage you to do that. So that's a deep dive of behind the algorithm that I put together in the spreadsheet that tells you what to do. Isn't that cool? So let's, let's pretend what happens. Let's say that your TQQ shares are down 50% on Monday. You don't panic. I don't want you looking at your net leg and going, oh gosh, I'm down so much money. I want you to, to be grateful for an opportunity to go in and to buy additional shares. That's what you do, right? Because you're sitting there going, I'm not, I don't need this money in the next year or two years. I'm just going to let this thing run. So that's what we do, All right? It's not a get rich quick. It's a get rich slow. 
But I think if we'll follow our little kabuki here, we're going to be just fine. All right, so you want to do a one, one, one? Let's try one. Just if you're new to the one, one, one dance, let's show you how to do one. So if the market's ever down, so let's say that the, the uh, micros are down today. So the micros are down, you know, 0.5. Okay, you want to do a one, one, one. So let's go do it. So we'll go to the table mode. We'll go nearest to 45 days. So that's going to be 39 days. You're going to do a long put vertical. Chi chi. You make it 50 points wide. All right. And then this is a debit. So you want to pay $10. So now I got to move my strikes down. I move my strikes down. And it gets hung there for some reason. So I got to move that down. So I'm at 11.75 debit now. Right. So I got to go down a little bit more, 10.75. Go down a little bit more, 10.25. So there we are. So let's buy this debit for ten dollars. Let's see if we can do it. And I'm gonna do two contracts. How much buying power? Okay. Yeah, two contracts. So we'll pay ten twenty-five. It's gonna make me pay ten fifty. Looks like. You can let it work. Let it sit. Don't need bathroom break. Whatever. So there you go. All right. Now what do you do? Now you buy two contracts where you can, or sell two contracts of the option naked that you can do for 20 bucks. Where is that one? That's right here, huh? It's a forty-three things. I'm gonna sell two of these. Quantity two. That's quantity two. So that's your one, one, one trade right there. ta -da. Done. Isn't that sweet? That's how you do. Now in uh, Thinkorswim, you can do it as one single, one single order, right? Hey, we're up $165. Bobby's a genius. No, I don't think of it that way. It's just a well thought out plan. Let's see if we can. Oh, one other element to the plan that, I, you know, you, you keep saying Bobby's never got it totally what it needs to be. We do need to know something else. We need to know one other pro. So let's say you are freaking out in the middle of the night. Right, let me do this uh, with the dome. Okay. So let's say you're freaking out in the middle of the night and you've got your thing or whatever and you're like, oh, Bobby, I just, you know, I'm afraid it's going down tonight. We just went into a nuclear war and China's invading Taiwan and I'm really scared. Remember, we're not supposed to be scared. We're supposed to embrace the downward move recalculate our thinking. Hey, it is almost as if Sears and Roebuck has a sale going on. You know, they're going into bankruptcy and they're selling everything for 10% on the dollar. Buy, 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 buy. Right, that's what we do. We, we buy, 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 buy. So we kind of need to know what MNQ gets us. All right? So these are the MNQs. So we kind of need to be familiar with trading the micro NQs as well. Let me see if I can spread this open a little bit so we can see that. So let's say for a moment, let's look at the chart. Let's go over here. If I'm gonna at least put on a trade for a minute, we need to at least do it on, let's do it on here. Let's do it on the NQs here. We'll look at the NQ chart and see if we're bullish or bearish for the moment, right? For this second in time. Let's see if we can make a dollar. Okay, so, uh oh, it just hit yellow. That means it's going down. Okay, so I'm going to go bearish. All right, my ticks just hit at the bottom, which means it'll probably reverse and go upward. But we just had the yellow hit. The ticks are looking kind of down. Oh, no, let's go Let's go bearish. So we go back over here. So let's say that that's what we do. And I'm going to sell one contract. Wow, where did it go? It's dropping like a fly. Let's sell a contract. So I put a limit order in. All right, where we are. So if we get hit. Hit me, baby, hit me. And remember, you don't want this to be in queue. That's way too big. We want it to be, oh, no, the market's leaving me. Come back and hit my order. What we need to do is make sure we know how many deltas, if we go short or long, on the MNQs it's going to be. But with the market just dropping like this, how can we do that? Oh, here we are. We're about to get hit. Hit me, baby. Hit me. All right, so we're in. All right, so let's go look. So I made $1.50. I'm up 50 All right, let's go see what our thingies are. All right, so if I go MNQ, here we go. Right. So I just sold one contract. So one contract short or long of the MNQs is giving me negative 79 spy weighted deltas. Everybody with me? So 
That way, if you say, Bobby, I need to immediately go negative deltas, I'm, I'm a little bearish. Well, sell you a contract, right? Sell you a one contract of the MEQ since we're doing the Qs. Or you can still do a MES. Remember, if you sell one of the MES, a futures contract, it's 50 deltas plus or minus. So the MNQ is slightly bigger. It gives us about 80 deltas plus or minus. So we kind of need to know what that is. Right? In case you ever go into the bomb shelter and you want to immediately take cover. All right, let's see how our little thing is doing over here. How much money have we made? Oh, crap. We've lost $8. The life is over. So what do you do? You sit here and you go and you put your buy order in. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it down from there. I'm going to buy you back. Keep on going, Jack. Keep on going down. There you go. Might even hold it for a profit here. If we keep, oh, there we go. You know, always have your stop. Now we can put it in for a profit, right? Now we put my little plus in and we'll get triggered. So we lost 50 cents on the day. Wow, cry me a handful. It was really worth it though, right? To see how much positive or negative deltas we can get from trading a futures contract in the MNQ. So make sure on your account that you are futures enabled, right? Contact your broker and tell them, dude, I, I got, I, you know, they'll ask you how long you traded futures and blah, 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 and you tell them whatever. But you need futures permissions in case we ever feel the need to go back into the bunker. I'm not saying that we ever have to. And finally, the last thing you do before you leave the futures, trading futures, and that's what we did. We traded an entire futures contracts on the MNQ. Make sure you hit the flat button. Okay, when you're out, flat. Even if it's not lit, just to make sure you have closed everything. I click it a couple times. I want to be out of everything. You do not want to be my buddy, Rob, who is trading oil futures, not no micro oil futures. I mean, he's trading oil futures, and dude goes to sleep in the middle of the night and wakes up, and he's down 30000 in the morning. You don't want to be Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's got some great stories though. Uh, I wish I could bring him over one day and he could talk with you and tell you, yeah, there was the day I went to sleep trading oil futures and lost, you know, 30 grand. Mm -hmm. So don't don't be robbed. All right, questions at all. Isn't this cool though? Are y'all excited? Stacy, are you excited? Stacy never gets excited. I want Stacy to be excited. Batman's got to go, daughter stuff. I understand totally. We got the high school football game tonight. Taking all five of the kids. That ought to be interesting. So y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will see y'all on Monday.